When you go to New York City, what's your favorite thing to do? Might it be maybe catching a show, shopping, people watching? Of course, I enjoy all those as well. But another place I love to go to is a place called Italy. Italy is this great restaurant, unique concept of wandering around, enjoying slow cooked food, real Italian, genuine authenticness. It's awesome. Well, our next guest is out with his 10th book, and he's also the creator of that concept. His name, of course, is Mario Batelli, and here's his brand new book. And Mario, I've got to ask, this is the 10th one. Why this and why now? Well, all of the cookbooks I've written up until now have been pretty much about restaurant food and predominantly about Italian food. So it occurred to me that at my house, really, I don't necessarily eat Italian all the time, and I certainly don't eat restaurant food all the time. So I wanted to kind of capture how American home cooks make their food delicious and how, if there was a way, I could kind of give them a, a little direction on how to make it more delicious, not only for their bellies, but how to make it better for their community and better for their family. And that's what the Farm to Table movement's all about. It's, it's not so much just a slogan and, and, and restaurateurs taking it, but it's about understanding the value of the regional stuff that's around you and celebrating it in a way that we used to sell just imported products. So now when you understand that the best scallop or the, the best tomato or the best corn comes from a farm near your house, you're already one up on all the people that have to take it from somewhere else. And that's the real fundamental message behind the book. Well, Mario, I certainly love the message. And of course, the results sound delicious. I know you're uh, slicing something up there for us. What uh, recipe are you preparing for us today? Right. Well, it's the end of, uh, it's the, end of the summer growing season. It's kind of the beginning of fall. It's also football season. So this works really well for all of those categories. I'm taking green tomatoes, which are the last thing the tomato vine gives up at the end of the year. I'm gonna sprinkle them, I slice them first, I sprinkle them with a little salt and pepper, and then I put something inside of them, which, which could be just about anything. If you wanted to use leftover sauerkraut or you wanted to use leftover barbecue, that'd be great. In my case, I'm taking a little bit of local New York goat cheese. You could use any cheese from the south or from anywhere that you happen to be. I'm gonna take a little bit of prosciutto, but a country ham would be an excellent idea. And then I'm gonna take a half a leaf of sage and put it inside of each one. Then I'm gonna press them down and kind of create these funny little sandwiches like so. Then I'm gonna dredge them in a little bit of flour, then in a little bit of milk with some beaten egg and throw them into some panko breadcrumbs. The panko breadcrumbs are the Japanese style ones that are a little crunchier and create a little bit more crust without nearly as much bread as if you were gonna make like say a grilled cheese. So I press that on, and at this point you could stop and let them sit in the fridge until you're ready to cook them, or you could make them right now and hold them in a nice warm oven until your guests got here. And then I throw them in like so, and just saute them. So effectively with the breading on the outside, what I've created is kind of a grilled cheese sandwich, but it's really more based on the tomato, which is healthier, happier, seasonal, less expensive, and really emblemates the entire message of the book. How's it look? Not only does it look good, I bet it tastes delicious, but Mario, with your books, your restaurants, your various concepts, you've had tremendous success, but what interests you the most about food right now? I think what, what gives me the most interest and what drives me the craziest with the most fun, particularly in America, is that there are stories across the nation that are something remarkable, they're, they're traditional or they're new, but they speak of our soul. And, and, and in, in, in a way that sometimes when you travel around the country, you hear different kinds of music. Traveling around the country and seeing the different kinds of food is exactly as exciting as that. And you can look at the history of blues very much like you can look at the history of gastronomy. And what makes me excited about it is that there are new people playing the same instruments in a new way that makes it so good that food has become something that we should be nationally proud of. It is internationally successful American food, and doing it at the house doesn't have to be as fancy as a restaurant, but it can be as delicious and as important for us. Mario, it might seem like an easy question because you're so good at it, but why do you love cooking so much? Well, there's nothing more satisfying than to be able to give someone something that you made. And if you can give them something that you made that's warm, nutritious, and by nature they're already happy to see, everyone's happy at dinner time. There's no one that comes to the table and says, oh, geez, we have to eat dinner again. It's more like, what's for dinner? We're really excited. You spend the day or you spend just a half hour making something truly delicious that has a connection and a story to you. You are doing the right thing. You are capturing life as best it can be possibly given to someone. And when you give it to someone, the satisfaction of watching someone eat something like that is equal in my heart when I'm able to enjoy them enjoying something that's good for them. Mario, we're glad you cook. What you have created is delicious. Thanks for this latest book and more importantly, thanks for talking with us. Thanks, Con. I appreciate it.